Hi guys, Micro here. This is my guide, tips and setup for Master Clues. In this video, I'll go into detail with loads of different helpful tips and my full setup to get over 18 Master Clues an hour. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the setup, as always, there is links to the items in the description corresponding with the numbers. So if there's an item here that you don't fully understand, I'm going to comment briefly on each thing, but if you want more detail, you can click the wiki links in the description and there'll be more information on that, like how to obtain it, etc. So looking at number one, the Master of the Gainodermic teleports you to one of the steps for Master Clues and it has two charges every day, definitely worth using. Number two, is my passage of the abyss it combines six jewelry into one slot so it saves so much inventory space the jewelry that i have is ring of dueling amulet of glory games necklace combat bracelet skills necklace and dig site pendant i think the ones i use mostly for masters would be the amulet of glory and the dig site pendant the rest aren't used too much Number three is a Grace of the Elves. I have this attuned to live in rock caverns as that saves so much time there and to overgrown idols as it has access to a glider and it's right near the Jadinko lair. Number four is the Tyranwin Quiver. This teleports you to Laletia. And this is useful because it teleports you right next to the step in Laletia for Master Clues. Number five is my Drygore. It has Glowworm and Mobile on it. Mobile is 100% needed here. It's so useful. And Glowworm lights up caves, but that's more for elite clues. Number six is the full Globetrotter outfit. So nice to use the jacket and backpack. And if you have the full outfit, you don't have to take the items out of your hidey holes to do emote clues. Fantastic. Number seven is my sit phase circuit ring. It teleports me to the world gate. There is an emote clue inside the Yatui area, which is right next to the world gate. Number eight is my meerkat pouch. Number nine is my dungeoneering cape to teleport to resource dungeons. Number 10, I have two rune pouches with all elemental runes and law runes in. This allows me to teleport to places like Falador and Lumbridge for masters. Number 11, I have a dwarven fishing extractor so I can fish two fish at once guaranteed. This is amazing for master clue steps. Number 12, I have elder logs and magic logs. They're both a step of masters, so it's nice to have them in your inventory to just burn them instantly. Number 13, I have a Saradomin brew ready to be made, another step for a master. Number 14, I have the Big Book of Piracy. This takes you to Mostly Harmless for one of the steps. 15 is the Disc of Returning. This takes you to behind the scenes to see Paul Gower. 16 is a Dragon's Medallion for the Dark Mirror scans. 17 is a Zamorak brew ready to be made for one of the steps. 18 is a Desert Amulet 2. There's a reason why it's a Desert Amulet 2. You can go to the person in Nada to get a extra Desert Amulet 2, even if you have Desert Amulet 4. And the reason I have this is because it doesn't have a Uzer Teleport. You don't need the Uzer Teleport for Masters. So this is literally just right click straight to Nada, and the only place you need to go for Masters is Nada. So it saves some clicks. Doesn't seem like much, but it does add up. We have a attuned crystal teleport seed to get all around Prif for that scan. It also takes you to the Heffin agility course, stuff like that. We have heart teleport tabs to get there for the scan clue. Number 21 is a bit of an unconventional one, but it's super helpful. It's an artisan's cape. Inside my artisan's cape, I have the cooking cape and the crafting cape. There is steps in master clues that you have to cook food or you need to make black dragon hide bodies. Having this and these two cape perks really help for these steps. Number 22 is my Karos Clue Carrier. Holds clues and caskets for me, lovely. 23 is Evil Dave's Spellbook to teleport to certain locations. You just put the chip teleport tabs inside the spellbook and you can teleport to any of them. 24 is an Ectophile for the Port Phasmatis emote clue. Number 25 is a Toggle Zoe. This gets you to the fight caves nice and quickly. 26, Meerkat Scrolls, so you can skip the wizards with the Meerkat special attack. 27, I have a Replenishment Potion. I'll show this later on in the video, but Replenishment Potions give you Adrenaline and that's super helpful for the double agents on Master Clues as they can be quite tanky. This gets them killed super easy and make sure that you don't run out of prayer. Number 28 is my Ark Journal. This teleports me to loads of different places on the Ark and it also teleports me to Port Sarim so then I can get to Uncharted Isles, stuff like that very easily. 29 is my Menophos Journal. The two things I use for Master Clues inside this journal is Imperial Teleport Tabs because that's right next to the library. And I also use Sophodome Slayer Dungeon Teleports so I can go do the Plover Bird one. Then finally, number 30 is a Wicked Hood. 
The Wicked Hood teleports you to different altars and things like that, so it's definitely needed. Hopefully the setup was helpful. I'm going to move on to showcasing some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout all of the masters I've done. I'd advise to have certain items next to each other in your bank. These items would be Raw Shock, Raw Wild Pie, Fire Rune, Decorated Cooking Urn, and Dragon Leather. Then obviously in your preset you have your Artisan's Cape, which helps for these steps where you have to cook, or the step that you have to do the Dragon Leather. Having these in a tab makes it very easy to complete a clue step. I just used the Max Skill Teleport, but any teleport near a bank would work, and you just make it at the bank. And if it's something like the Black Dragon Eyed Body, I'll just stick my cape on, bank, and just put my whole inventory in the bank, take the clue out, make it, and then just load my preset up again and it's ready to go. Just make sure you bring your clue with you. The only one I don't do in the Max Guild is the one for the Wild Pie because it needs to be cooked on a range. So I just go to Catherby as there's a range right next to a bank. I'll take the pie out of the bank, go cook that pie, and you're done. Whenever you get a Prif scan, go to Trahern. If it is a double pulsing underneath of you with the rings, you want to surge straight out towards the rock. Typically, the spot will be outside of Prif, and you can see it from here. It saves a lot of time. This one, people normally overlook. Whenever I fight a double agent, I use an Adrenaline Pot and the Limitless Ability. The Limitless Ability allows you to cast thresholds at under 50% Adrenaline. So you can literally hit the double agent once, use a Replenishment Potion, chuck your prayers up, Limitless, into a destroy and an assault and then it's pretty much dead this really speeds up the time it takes you to kill double agents i definitely would recommend it and even if you don't have the limitless ability i definitely recommend a replenishment potion either way this is one of the ones that saves me the most amount of times living rock caverns with the grace of the elves puts you directly at the start of it it's so so nice some people use the Invention Guild, but I seem to get this way more often. And I just used a Falador Lodestone for the Invention Guild, and this saves me more time. This is exactly why I use a Dwarven Fission Extractor. You can make it so it gives you two times resources and no XP. I just teleport to Catherby, go fish a shark, and it'll give me two guaranteed, and it'll complete this step. You can buy these from Vic whenever he comes around. These last a long time while doing them just for Master Clues. A tip for the Heffin Agility course step, if you have a full Globetrotter, you can teleport straight to Heffin with your Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed and do the emote where you land and you'll actually be in the radius to do the emote and spawn the double agent. Obviously, you'd have to take out of the hidey hole if you don't have the Globetrotter, but this speeds up this step tons. I'd definitely advise doing the Philippe Carnelian's little mini quest after the actual quest. So you can move him to the Tsar fight caves. I'll leave a link to the mini quest in the description. You literally just have to go speak to him in like five different locations. It takes a couple of minutes and then he'll permanently be at the fight caves. So for this step, he's literally right next to where you land with the Tokuzo teleport. Save so much time. The Wicked Hood is really nice because it can teleport to altars and then you can go into the altar and just withdraw one essence with your free inventory space and make that one rune and it'll count as crafting that blood rune for the step or the death rune. Easy peasy. There is a couple of steps I will skip. There is some that I will always skip and some that I will only skip if I have high charges on my backpack. If I have high charges on my backpack, I'll skip smithing a rune full helm as it does take a while, but it's not the worst. The same applies with the Heffin Agility cause, because you have to dismiss your Meerkat and stuff, it can be a bit annoying. But it's definitely not the worst, so I'd only skip this if I have high charges in my backpack. That being said, stuff that I always skip is the Charming Moth in the Wilderness, because I ain't got no time for the Wilderness, and using a Cleansing Crystal, because that takes like 3 minutes and it's just such a waste of time. That one takes absolutely ages worth a skip. And my least favourite one that is always a skip, I always keep at least one reroll just in case I get this, and that is the Doggish Khan Agility Course. This is absolutely horrible to do. Would always skip this whenever you have a backpack, save a charge for this. It's just not fun to do. And there are two things that I jack it. 
One of them is Dark Mare, because that can be a very annoying one, especially if it's all the way around the other side of Dark Mare, it can take a long time. The other one is the Skin Weaver, when I've used both of the charges from my Gainodermic Mask. Teleporting straight to the Skin Weaver can save a lot of time, because it does take a long time to get to her from the Dungeoneering Resource Dungeon. A little tip that not everyone knows is that the squares on Tower Puzzles can actually be right-clicked to select the number. You can spam click to make it go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it's quicker to just right click the four and fives in my opinion and just spam click the ones and the twos and the threes speeds up doing tower puzzles a little bit the last tip is using alt one to your advantage if you teleport to the eastern lands and you have an eastern lands arrow clue when you go to travel to any of the eastern lands islands you can right click them press alt and one on your keyboard just like with elite clues it will show it on your Alt-1 interface. So when you go to that island, you click that area. It will then put a line on your map so you can triangulate the location on where it is in the eastern lands. As you can see, mine is in Waiko, so I teleport to the middle of Waiko, run over and go over and dig there. Triangulating by pressing Alt and 1 on each island definitely saves some time. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something, whether it's a good item for your setup or a tip on one of the steps. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content or related to RuneScape 3. And until next time, see ya.